What's up, what's up, and welcome to another episode, Master Modes Film Session, and today we're going to be talking about Mason Cole, the newly acquired center for the Pittsburgh Steelers from the Minnesota Vikings. Thank you, Lizzo. I appreciate you for that. So, without further ado, that's Mr. Mason Cole right there, man in the middle. We're going to play a full speed out there. We're going to break it down. Love talking a little O-line. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And you know I like Mason a little bit more, man. Actually, you know, former teammate. Shout out to my Arizona Cardinals out there. But he got that five deuce on. Everybody know that knows me? Oh, that five deuce. That meant something to the butt. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. But... Let's talk about my man Mason right here. So, obviously, we got an inside run right here. And the thing that I like is this, man. Number one, in terms of the physicality of this play, Mason understands his time. He understands that, first off, he has to get this guy chipped, right? Because he's trying to combo block with 72, and then he wants to climb up to this inside uh, or backside back right here or technically he's the front side back he just shifted over because of the three by one set one two three remember we talked about that right anytime it's three by one single back man if it's an inside linebacker you want to cheat to the trips because there's nothing on that back side you know initially well at least in this case you should be able to get back over there right but <clears throat> that's the thought process right here so when you're talking about mason Nice, uh, nice job getting this guy in terms of just helping him out, bumping him enough. You don't have to stay on this block too long, man. Once you feel like your tackle has this guy, or excuse me, your guard has this guy overtaken, you don't have to spend a lot of time right here. So he bumps the guy. He clearly sees 72, has control, has his helmet inside, and now he's getting his eyes to that inside. Now, this is something that's sweet right here, man, because this is a young guy right here. I believe this is a uh, Berman, or I think I see he said his last name, but, um, Really rangy athletic inside backer, man. So you see right here with Mason, he has to cut this guy off, okay? And you're saying, well, hey, man, this guy can go that way. He can go that way. How do you do it? How do you handle it? Well, if you're Mason, you have to understand that, hey, you're not the better athlete here. So don't wait. Space is your enemy. Go attack. And that's what he does right here. Ultimately, making this inside backer have to uh, <clears throat> have a one-way go. He doesn't have time to try to out-athlete him, foot fake him or anything. He has to go right now because uh, Mason dictates. Mason determines his action. And great job by Dalvin, obviously, reading the, uh, the block right here. But I like that a lot, man. Mason getting up Phil's shoulder and not tugging at the end of this. You do not want to hold, especially at the point of attack like that, man. Anytime you talk about, you know, the, the little extra tug on some of these plays is cool in the core, right? And we're talking about the core. I'm talking about in this boxy area where it's not always seen or not always called. But when you start getting to the second level, that tug becomes a little bit more blatant. Obviously, a lot more eyes on it, and those flags would eventually come. So good job right there by him being disciplined enough to get that uphill shoulder, but not pulling on it, man. But like I said, nice job by him right there, man. Really good work. I'll play it one more time in full speed just so you can see that thing one more time. How they say it? one more game? I see it. I thought they one more game. That one more game. Now play it one more game. Now there it is. Boom. Yep. Nice bump on 98. Then get on up there to that second level, baby. But I like that a lot. We need it in the run game. Y'all know it. Y'all know it. All right, now for this next play we're going to see from Mason, it's just going to show him drive block in, man, having a nose tackle right over top of him at the point of attack. Something that we want to see. Can you move big body interior D line? Because we know last year we had our uh, inconsistencies in that particular area. So I'm going to circle him anyways, but he's the center. You can't miss the center. He's always in the center. All right, he always has the ball before the play starts. But anywho, I'm a creature of habit, so you know how that goes. But let's play this in full speed. Not that we're going to break it down. All right, all right. So as we talked about, man, uh, for Mason, man, this is a simple uh, front right here, man. 3-4 base defense, okay? When you talk about that 3-4, you got your nose tackle who's directly in front of him. Five, five. Tech, those are the two five techniques. I ain't think I need to make them all nice and neat. And then from there, you got your three LBs. One, two. Bosa. Other cat, all right? This cat becomes Khalil Mack now, man. That's crazy. <laughs> but 
on this particular play, man, for the uh, offense, though, we're just talking about the inside zone here, okay? Or split flow. But um, <clears throat> with this, for Mason, he has to move this guy, man. It's that simple. Make And, and, and Dalvin's going to make him right. When you talk about this guy being in a zero like how he is in terms of the defense, the nose tackle, zero technique, directly head up. Man, for Mason, he just has to get movement, all right? Get movement. And in this situation, man, you see it right there at the finish, okay? So initially, man, it's a stalemate, right? Because it's a big dude, this D-lineman, man. Hey, he is not a, a little guy. He is not somebody that's easily moved. But what I like from Mason is this. Watch his hands, watch his feet get hot, all right? So initially, stalemate, right? Even giving up a little bit of movement, okay? And you can see he's, hey man, stressed out, strained in a sense. But what do we get after that? Watch the feet. Watch the feet. Hot feet. And that's the thing that's important right there, man. Because it's all right to have a stalemate. But what you cannot do is give ground, all right? And a lot of times when that stalemate happens, if you just keep fighting, you can go ahead and get that dub at the end of this thing. And that's ultimately how Mason wins this right here. He gets to that stirring wall early because he's not an overly large uh, center. No, he's not. But he's quick and he understands his strengths. Get into that stirring wall. Hand placement. Hot feet. Fundamentally sound. And that's the thing that I like right here when you talk about Mason. Watch the feet get hot. Boom. Boom. Let's go. Let's go. Like I said, a light little tug at the end, and I'm okay with that. When you're talking about it being in the core like that, you can get away with it more times than not. It just can't be egregious. But I definitely like this play, though, man. And like I said, with him being a smaller, or, or excuse me, on the smaller side in terms of that center position, man, you just want to make sure that you're fundamentally sound. You got to have that hand placement, pad level, good knee bend, active feet, all right? And these are all the things that Mason does right here ultimately to clear that whole nice pickup right there by Dalvin. And I'm just saying, Dalvin doing it like that. Whoo, wait, I can't wait to see what Najee gonna do. <sighs> yes, yes, yes. But let's keep it going, baby. Let's keep it going. All right, now on this play, we're gonna get a chance to see Mason pass blocking. Now, I always like that because we know, man, as an offensive lineman, you gotta be able to do both. You gotta run block, which we've seen, but you also gotta be able to protect this quarterback, man. So, without further ado, we're gonna play it in full speed, and after that, we're gonna break it down. And I'm not circling him. Y'all know where he's at. He's the center. If this is the quarterback, he's right in front of him. All right, here we go. By the way, that's a heck of a play by that DB. I had to say that. I'm just sorry. You know, I can't help myself, man. That, that's how you finish the play, baby. That's how you finish the play. But anywho, let's talk about my man, Mason Cole. So what he's facing right now is this uh, bare front, all right, where essentially the Chargers are trying to uh, take up all these inside gaps, right? One, two, three, four. Or essentially, you want to get one-on-ones in there. And then you got one, two. This guy right here, he's your free runner. He's scraping sideline to sideline. Obviously, he's going to be in your contain and stuff like that. But for this particular play for Mason, he has action right now. Even though this guy's not lined up in a zero technique because he's obviously in the gap right here, right? He's in this A gap, all right? But because he's also to his side and he can feel this guy all the way over here, he knows, man, I might have some serious work right here. So as soon as the play starts, what do we get from Mason? Hand shot, all right. But initially, what? His hands are on the outside, right? It's not the best. We always say we want to get to the stern wheel first. So what does Mason do to combat that, especially on the play action pass where you know you got to give the quarterback more time, right? Back to the, uh, got his back to the defense, want to protect him. But for Mason, this is what I like right here. The hands, repositioning, replacing them, keeping the feet moving, even though he's giving up some ground because like I said, he's not a big center. I think he's what, 298? He's tall. 6'4", six, 6'5", six, but he's only about 298, 299 max, so he's a lighter guy, but this is how he wins. This is how he protects, all right? Inside hand, okay, let's reposition. Let's replace. You see he has a nice stab right here, okay? Good balance with his footwork, not crossing over. All right, he's coming back. Counter, all right, well, let's take him this way then. Let's go, let's go, let's go. But this is good right there by him, man. That's it. That's when you talk about Mason, smart player, very technical. The things that he struggles with are the bull rush because, like I said, he's on the lighter side. But this is how he ultimately, um, what do you call it, uh, <laughs> combat that. There we go. That's ultimately how he combats it, all right? Like I said, good job right there by him, man, using his hands, using his feet, never crossing over, 
keeping his head out of it and ultimately giving Kirk Cousins that opportunity to get this ball downfield because this is a long, de- uh, long developing play. This is off the play action pass. So even though it ends, you know, with Mason being back here in this backfield a little bit deep, just think about how long this play took for that to happen. This, I mean, Kirk is protected. He has time. He's scanning. He's reading. He still has time. He still has time. So to me, man, that's what you like to see right there, especially from an undersized guy. You can be undersized, but you have to find out how to win in this league. And right there, that's what Mason is showing, man. And I'll play it one more time in full speed. And after that, man, we're going to go to the next clip, baby. Still can't believe he broke that, play, that pass up, man. That's nuts. Nuts. All right, now this last play we're going to show from Mason just uh, shows him once again pass blocking versus another big body interior D lineman. So, as we always do, I'm not circling him. You know he's right in front of this quarterback that's right here, okay? He's right there. I promise he is. But I can't do it. I can't circle him. He's the center, bro. Come on, man. Y'all know this. All righty, all righty. So, um, once again, man, he's facing a base front, but the nose, instead of being directly head up right here, he's just slightly shaped, all right? Right on that side. So it makes it a little bit different for Mason in the sense that, hey, man, this guy is already all set to one particular side, so you can kind of cheat or hedge, you know, which way you think he's going to go. And now you know he could always counter and come across face, but that's just a different type of movement. But this is information right here, all right? So as we start the playoff, for Mason, what he sees right now, inside hands, right? This time he gets there fast, but what does the D-lineman go with? The club tries to knock him off balance, and for a second, he does get him. Let me rewind that back a little bit. He do it. He, 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 he get him a little bit now. Ha! Huh. Get him up on, on his heel a little bit, one foot in the air. But watch his recovery. This is what I like. Boom. You saw that right there. Do you see the pump? You see the feet pump together? Boom. That's the anchor. Then from there, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Make him spin like his top right there, man. Keep him right in the same place. Oh, yeah. But that's what you want. That's beautiful. That is beautiful recovery by Mason. Like I said, I like the initial hands. But, yeah, that outside club, that's the Reggie White. That's real. That's real. But the recovery, I love that recovery. And then pumping them brakes. Let's go. Keep the feet moving. Never crosses over either. You see him. All right. When you talk about the fundamentals, when you talk about the consistency, this is what it needs to look like from him. This is what it needs to be every single snap. This is what we're asking for. You put it on tape. I need it now. I need it, Mason. Inside hand. Let's go. Like I said, though, nice job recovering. 98, make him spin like a top right there, man. Good work by him to finish that play, man. But, um, when we talk about Mason, man, like I said, undersized in a sense, man, just because, like I said, he's not a big body guy at all, but he's fundamental. He has started an experience. He started, what, two years, uh, 16 or 15, 16 games in Arizona. Then obviously started, uh, he was spot started at times last year in Minnesota, but did finish strong towards the end of the season. And that's why we pulled from this uh, particular game right here. But you let me know your thoughts on Mason, man, if you're excited about him. And if you think that he's going to be an upgrade at that center position um, in contrast to what we had last year. But either way, I appreciate you for tuning in. And until next time, baby. Peace.